and here we are. We're doing it again. We're right. jumping in and we're just going to deal with funnel issues. You know, a couple issues or episodes ago, we talked about uh, dealing, you know, with the hard conversations and yep. uh, we're going to, we're going to transition that to not just be conversations, but to be a little uh, something else. So we talk a lot about teams here. Um, and when we do, I am sure uh, that each one of you thinks about all the individuals on your team. That's something we do. I know I do that. I start thinking through all the people that that I lead on a daily basis, um, the people that they lead. Um, and I'm willing to bet that when you're thinking through this, there's at least one person, maybe two, maybe three, um, that, that you kind of roll your eyes about or you just sigh and shake your head because they are that problem child. Um, I think we all know that every team seems to have one, right? Um, we know they're the one that just doesn't quite fit. Um, or maybe they're not as quick at production as the others, or maybe they're always late. Maybe their performance is just passing, but it's not the stellar or exemplary performance that you have tried to build in your culture. Maybe you've told them to shape up or else they're out. Uh, maybe you've just watched them in frustration um, as they continue to not grow and not change and continue down the same path. So Blake, as we, as we transition back to these hard conversations and things like that, and let's talk today about that problem child and really how to deal appropriately with them for the benefit of them, for you and for your entire team. Yeah, we are very emotional beings. I think if anything else you've True. probably picked up, if you've, if you're with us this long and you've listened to these episodes, I think you probably are like, huh, I think Blake and Pete's perspective is that we're all very emotional and, and we're uh, yeah, human. That's, that's very true. We're very yeah. emotional and, um, we tend to come to conclusions pretty quick. Like we will have something happen and all of a sudden the conclusion we come up with, that's it. That is truth. That is the way it is. And then the problem with that tends to be uh, confirmation bias. Okay. Hmm. Confirmation bias is this idea that like when you finally start believing something, everything else that happens in the world and around you is there to prove what you already believe, not to help you see something different. That's not our problem. Our problem is not that like, wow, we really give everyone the benefit of the doubt and we really think about all factors before we make decisions. No, we don't. We're very emotional. We come to conclusions quickly and everything else that happens only proves more what we already believe because it's way easier to discount others than to dig into issues to help benefit and grow a team. And now I know we want to grow a team for sure. And leaders want to help build the next level of person. But we also know that we're doing a million and a half other things and it's a lot easier to just maybe quickly discount than to dig into the issue. I think another problem that we see, honestly, is the messaging that we get a lot, especially today, is it's better to have a warm body on a job or a job site than to not have anybody at all, right? So why dig into a problem and make it quote unquote worse when you've got somebody who's showing up every day? Um, we, we, you know, we've talked about in a couple episodes back, I think it actually was last season, about the workforce and where we stand. And it's easy just to say, you know what, I've got somebody, my numbers are good. I'm providing the, the quote unquote amount of people that I need to have on the job or the job site. And therefore, why should I do anything? And that just leads to more inaction. We don't do anything about this. Have you, have you had that perspective before? Uh, yeah, actually I have uh, previous yeah. job. We just needed bodies and seats. We ran, I ran a logistics company and I had to have somebody in a truck doing the work. And this was a couple of years back. Um, so we didn't have the same workforce issues that we, we deal with today. Um, but in the market we were in, um, it was hard to find really good people who were willing to do the work that we needed them to do. So we just kept the problem children. We would try to correct and adjust, but honestly, the, the more that we could just keep them in the truck, um, and, and quote, unquote, making money, their seat, you know, their, their butt on the seat, the better off we were. At least yeah, that was I think, the perspective. I think we probably all have had that perspective, right? The, 
we just need a, a warm body to make sure we don't get yelled at, right? Doesn't that sound emotional? Yes. Yep. <laughs> that we don't let something down or, you know, it, it's very emotional. Um, but our mindset of tending to treat result-based problems is maybe the bigger issue here. How we, you know, we come to these conclusions quickly about people. Um, and then these result-based problems, we almost treat every issue like it's the same issue. And I don't, I don't mean that like, we think it's always the same problem, but whatever we come to really quick, um, we we don't give. I'm trying to think of the way to say this, we don't give grace to it might be something else. Okay, so for example, um, if someone's not being efficient, okay, if they're just not getting stuff done, they're all of a sudden not a good worker because they're not efficient. But why? Why are they not efficient? And I think this is where we spend little time. We want to come to the conclusion quick. They're crap because they're not quick. Um, are they not quick because of training? Yeah. Are they not quick because of pace? Is it the personality difference between the leader and the person in the field? Is it your leadership style as the leader? Is it clarity of what we're doing? Uh, is it, and this is one all of a sudden it's going to seem like, yeah, the leader, the leader, but sometimes it turns like this. Is it alcohol and drugs? Is it a desire for them to actually even be there with you? Okay. Yeah. We have to kind of understand that it's going to take time to figure some of these things out and digging into the investment is really where you kind of have to sit here because everything I just mentioned takes time to really dig in and see if, if it's one of those, or is it just that they're an a-hole? That's, that's a possibility too. And if they are, we just don't want to think, well, every time there's a problem, it must be this one because the last problem was this problem. We, yeah. we need to see every person on your team as an investment into that team. And some investments take a lot long time to ret have return, right? The return does not happen overnight. Part of our problems and leadership is our, our, what is that called? Our uh, immediate gratification problem. Yeah. That we want to have a different result and a different change overnight. And if it doesn't happen, you know, I told you to change your ways and you didn't. And it's been 48 hours. How dare you? But yeah. sometimes that investment pays off. And we've seen that investment pay off many times, many yeah. times. We've, we've got team members galore in leadership positions that at one time or another were questionable of whether we were keeping them. Okay. Because guess what? We all have problems at different times. You are probably someone's problem child. Okay. And I know we don't like thinking that that's not fun. I don't like that, but that's just the way it is. We're all different types of fruit and we're going to rub people the wrong way. And some people like certain types of fruit and others don't. And that's just that. So you will be somebody's problem child because you're not perfect. And because there are just many other issues that could be causing the issue for the leader at the time. Okay. So there are many potential issues to a problem child. And I kind of want to dig into some of these just to kind of like, maybe we should look at this a little different because we don't, we don't give enough grace. I'll just say that. And we don't allow the investment to work long-term. Sometimes just getting rid of someone is dealing with the issue. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Sometimes that is dealing with the issue. But if you've invested and invested and invested and invested, and then you get rid of them, um, and sometimes that's the right move, but you get rid of them too quick and they go to another company and all of a sudden that company and that tension moment that you went with you went through just then with that person was the thing that tipped them in. That's like a success story going to someone else. All of a sudden yep. that, you know, problem child, uh, minor league baseball player goes somewhere else and all of a sudden hits it out of the park. And so that's where you have to like understand that reaping, like the idea of sowing and reaping, reaping is done by cutting things and by really dealing with some of those hard times with problem children. Um, so I think identifying what the issue is 
you're probably going to hear me say a ton in this episode. That's, that's where you're spending your time is what is the issue. So some of the issues could be respect. A lot of times our mind goes to like, well, they just don't respect me as the leader. And I, and I don't know why I said it in that voice. Cause sometimes it's, it's legit. They don't respect you as the leader. And I don't know why, you know, it could be for issues that like for me, and I was just talking to one of my team members uh, yesterday uh, who looks very young for his age. And I'm very, I look very young for my age. Still can't grow a beard. Really believe someday when I grow up, <laughs> that'll happen. But, you know, just even something like that. Yeah, it was hard to get respect out in the field. And um, and then also um, just not knowing how or what's expected of that person, right? Are, are they a problem child? because they just, they're lacking clarity. Maybe their communication style and how they learn is different from the way you teach. Hmm. That's a possibility. Um, it could be that they're a problem child because of core values issues. Okay, when we dig into that, nope. If it's a core value issue of which nobody, or the team member is not willing to change, I've got a hard time keeping that around because the whole one bad apple destroys the bunch um, axiom is, is true. Uh, if it's a moral issue, uh, definitely is very questionable. You need to dig into that. Miscommunication is a big one. We are, you know, we've talked about, uh, we've had episodes that everyone sucks at communication. So if that's the case, then we have to assume that we're probably and possibly miscommunicating on one or both parties. Um, you know, another one is, have you built up and we've talked about this in the past? Geez, this is like an episode of like, Hey, we've talked about this yes. really um, <laughs> about the idea of building up your emotional bank account or your ability to be a leader in a bank account that we develop and grow our trust with one another in pennies and we spend it in dimes, right? These problem children, have you invested anything into them to build up to have hard conversations um if not if you just written them off then yeah that might be part of the problem um so another one is are they toxic like and this is a hard one i i even kind of like hesitated to dig into this of like oh, are they just toxic people i feel like we maybe use that word a little too loosely and but i think toxic for me at least toxic people are the people who it is they are 100 percent the main person in the story narcissistic um it is about causing issues and causing problems they live on the drama mm, i don't like it right and not at all they're those are those ones where you're just like i gotta keep my antenna up on this and, and be ready for this um I, this one sounds simple, but if they don't want to be there, you got to get rid of them. Okay. If they're just like, I don't think this is for me, but I want to stick around and um, just see how this goes. Well, I don't know about that. If you don't want to be here, I, I think maybe we, we need to part ways. I kind of want to go back to the toxic comment real quick. I was thinking about this as you were talking. If we're, it's easy for us to go to that place because it's it's easier for us to say, oh, they're just a toxic person than to say, let me help develop them, right? But the, the reality is, if they're really a toxic person, then maybe you need to put a little more focus on you and your responsibility when hiring, right? And in learning about people is, did you bring this person on? Did you not do the work, the due diligence of, of making sure that they fit with your culture and with your team, right? That's a really good test, I think, before you just write somebody off as being a toxic person. Hey, I sat with this person. We had a genuine conversation. They really opened up to me. They told me about this difficulty they faced. They told me about some hardships that they had in life. Maybe I need to actually look at this as this isn't a toxic person. Maybe somewhere we got off track. And I think it's, I think like you're saying, Blake, it's so easy to get into that because it gets thrown all around a lot. This is a toxic environment. It's a toxic person, right? 
it's a hard one to, to really nail down and say, oh yeah, this is actually a toxic individual. Sometimes that happens and they slip through. You're not going to notice it's going to be hard, right? But, um, give them that second, that second look before you just go, yeah, they're toxic and write them off. Mm. That's good. Uh, that's really good. I think what, what this is showing us is that every problem is different. Okay. We, we love the idea um, of putting things in boxes and being able to have one way to do something because that's just easier. Just tell me the three steps I need to do, the five steps I need to do, the 13 steps I need to do every time so that I don't have to think about this or deal with my emotion or deal with you know any other faculties here. But we're already in the emotion, right? Yeah. Um, there, I, I think, I really do think that wisdom is not finding one way of doing something, but is is always, or in trying to like that one way, always re replicating it, but it's figuring out what is the best way in this moment, right? So mm -hmm. it's not f trying to find one thing that I can do every time that comes out with the same result. That doesn't happen, yeah. not with complex, emotional human beings that doesn't that doesn't work because the thing we don't see is that every person has a story and experiences and thinks differently because of those stories and experiences and it's not so simple to try to put humanity into a box and put team growth into a box we have to understand that there is no one way we have to figure out the best way in this moment to do the right thing and a lot of times that means that we have to adjust, right? It's not necessarily always the team member that's adjusting everything. Sometimes we have to adjust too. We talked earlier about um, multiple team members that we have that are now in leadership positions because of a perceived issue or something that came up or a real issue. And we've had those conversations. Sometimes that means we have to move them to a different seat. And I know we've talked about this. This is the going back episode like it's like we just keep going back to different ones yeah right um and uh it, it's crazy um but we keep going back to this but we've talked before in the past about right person right seat right and how sometimes we need to adjust um to have that person be in the right seat rather than in the seat they're in and that takes time and adjustment on your part not just on their part yeah that's that's super super good um, I think what we've got to understand, you know, we, you talk about the right seats and man, we are, it is so true that we have got people who seemed like they weren't going to last into the right seats and not because we are some gurus at this. We're right. not, it's because we allowed an investment to, to be more of a growing a flower or a vegetable, we've allowed our investments to focus there more instead of hoping that all investments are GameStop and Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. And let's just be clear. Like one of these adjustments that we made, I just want to follow up with that because I, I realized how I sounded like, Hey, we've got this all together. No one, one <laughs> adjustment we made, it took three different seats for this person to find their place and, and several months. Like this wasn't just, oh, hey, here for this week, go in this one. And then next week, go in this one. And then the third week, oh, we found your spot. No, it took months. We even yeah. got to the point where we had to, we had to realize that we needed this seat before we even put that person in the seat. And then we put that person in the seat and went, oh my gosh, this is the right fit. Yeah. So it's not, it's not something that we've figured out by any, any stretch um, and right. is not a simple thing all the time. Sorry, I just wanted to make yeah. sure that was clear for everybody. No, that's good. And the the lights don't like this is the part that every you know, you wish that it was like every Walter Mitty movie where the sun just shines down on the right thing and you know exactly what to do. You don't. Yeah. That's why we jump around a ton, right? The but I think I think what we have to see is here is we have to have a mindset of what is the best case scenario. I know, like I say this all the time if if I had a pull string doll and my guys and my team members joke about this all the time, if I had a pull string doll, like a, a Woody from Toy Story where you pull it, 
it would be like culture, 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 culture. And, and guys joke about that all the time. Okay. I, I love that. Okay. But I think that that makes the mindset believe that that means ease and never having hard issues and never dealing with hard things. And um, we keep everyone. We don't. So if we've talked about uh, the problem child, that one individual that really doesn't match up to expectations. Um, maybe they're just not listening. Maybe you've watched them in frustration. Maybe you have reprimanded them. Uh, maybe they don't fit your culture. Uh, but we're talking about some of the reasons behind why they maybe why they act the way that they do, whether it be lack of clarity, whether it be um, just they're not fitting the culture, whether it be a personality difference, all these things play factors in how we interact with them and how we move forward with um, with our discussions with them. Next week, uh, we'll be talking about some practical steps on how to's. How do we interact with this person? How do we take the next step? How do we get them to take the next step? Thanks for joining us this week on the Ridgeline Leadership Podcast. See you guys next time.